prayer, civilization's oldest way of dealing with forces beyond its control. A beseeching, a hostile and difficult world to let this bit of mortality survive, transcend, perhaps even prosper. every tongue and every form, to every end and every divinity, people pray for a better life. The 800 million people all over the world who have been sucked into the whirlpool of absolute irreversible poverty, prayer has never been enough. They live on the margin of that bottomless vortex of never enough. The boats of their lives are daily dragged to the very edge of subsistence by a tide of hunger and thirst, illiteracy and disease. The poor are far from alone, yet they are far from the human amenities that the technologically advanced have come to assume are their birthright. The poor are nearly all isolated, rural. The water they must drink is wearying miles away, and the search for it sucks dry much of the lives of their women and children. Malnutrition is commonplace. Yet the medical care and basic education that might mitigate it are nearly non-existent. Powerless in the face of political and economic upheavals, the rural poor provide an endless supply of the world's refugees. Often their only employment is the pursuit of another day on earth, of subsistence on the most ragged fringe of human decency. And if there is a job, it might be that of a beast, of an animal with two legs and a strong back. Life is reduced to the pursuit of water and shelter, food and firewood. And the scars of deforestation inflicted on their world create environmental burdens as well. Their handicapped suffer and die. Their healthy will suffer and die. It is the rural poor all over the world, in the developed nations as well as the developing, who carry the staggering weight of the world's have-nots. The ones who will suffer forever are those who bear it singly. Those who will climb out of the maelstrom are those who discover the power of the community. For it is within the people that the solutions lie, the solutions that often can reverse a poverty cycle that seems endless, but is in fact a circle waiting to be broken. The grassroots are fertilized. The seeds of hope and aspiration sown by these Latin Americans building their children a new schoolhouse spring into life all over the world. They are part of a global phenomenon, an outpouring of local energy, of human spirit, that will not be denied. In isolated Andean villages, Peruvian mothers have learned communally to make nutritious meals for their children, a 
the sharing of both burden and knowledge. Abysmal sanitation has killed millions and left countless more debilitated. But the principles of disease transmission are beginning to be understood by those affected, like these Filipinos building their village a rudimentary but effective latrine. A community health project stocks a malaria-filled lake with fish that feed on the mosquito larvae. And nothing beyond the means of local sources and the sun's energy are needed to produce clean drinking water from a solar still. In Bangladesh, villagers drill their own wells by hand, using old-fashioned but effective sandpoint bits. and a local industry is born to cast parts for the pumps. Tanzanians turn out by the hundreds to dig a 240 kilometer water pipeline, each village along the route doing its part. It's too late to prevent her polio, but its crippling is eased by available technology. Newspaper for leg braces, and the village carpenter's contribution of exercise bars. Power to the people means giving them responsibility. And a Mexican village chooses one of its own to be sent away for health and sanitation training so he can administer the village water supply. The problems that oppress the rural poor have been with us for centuries and millennia. The solutions are more recent but just as well understood, yet what is most tragic is that when an isolated solution is found, uh, a community health project here, reforestation there, uh, local water reform somewhere else, it invariably withers in isolation. A solution that is born unheard that lives and dies unheard is itself part of the ultimate global problem. But now there is an answer to the question, how do we share the solutions? For the first time, an established global program for people who want to practice peace by making war on poverty. It is the International Exposition of Rural Development, a long-term effort to collect and perfect the approaches that work, to integrate and disseminate the solutions for the suffering of the rural poor. The necessities of life could be fulfilled. After all, the basic necessities are food, shelter, medicine. Can we not provide even these minimum necessities? I believe this is the objective with which we all have gathered here, and in the next few days, I'm sure you will be discussing, sharing your experiences, and coming to some concrete conclusions that will benefit all in the future. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Recently, 660 people from 55 nations, fully 75% themselves grassroots organizers and project workers, gathered in New Delhi for the midpoint plenary event of the exposition to share both answers and questions. You know, the world is opening up. These are fairly isolated people and they've always felt the problems they had were theirs alone. Now we're telling them, look here, this is our world too, and we're all part of it. I think the strengthening of rural communities is one of the keys to solving the problems of the industrialized world, because both the urban and the rural are part of the same ecosystem.
technical information from some of those people who stayed and lived in our community, built a new building and started a new industry. Already the exposition's computerized database contains information on more than 2,000 projects in 60 nations, an energy resource that ultimately may prove more powerful than any fuel. Is that 91 villages? 91 villages? Because we are now able to produce surpluses. This conference has reinforced our understanding of being one planetary community. We will process a lot of the surplus produce that we have. Before, the men were supposed to have the modern beehives, but now the women, they can do it themselves, so they can see what the men were gaining and what they were doing, so they can do the same. We believe that uh, the use of common sense is essential. The principles that are discussed in the conference hall and workshops are compared with reality during 30 field trips made by delegate teams to successful projects in rural India. There they see irrigation and family forestry, community health services, village housing, the harnessing of solar energy, bioenergy, and good old-fashioned human energy. These events are catalyzing world development worldwide, and it's time to share that with our own communities, because most of them don't realize they're having an effect on the whole world. Poverty plus ignorance creates sickness, and sick people cannot work, so they remain poor. It's a vicious circle. You have to involve the population. You must ask people what they want, what they really need, and build it with the population. If you just show up and give them something, you've wasted your time and your money. The Farmers Club thought that there should be a good open well quite close to the village. Wherever there is a good spot, they put in irrigation wells. The village people have con collected the money and they have bought the pump as well as the pipes. We have to let local initiatives fertilize the future. So we must switch from blueprint solutions imposed from outside to a greenhouse approach. Nurture from within. We have to let the grassroots grow. So, in a spirit of friendship and community, a quiet passion of peace and fellowship, we've reached the midpoint of a three-year process. The real work of this movement has just begun, but the well of enthusiasm is already overflowing. I'm ready to go back home and tell people that there are alternatives to giving up. Let's go for it. We've got to let the world know what we have seen here during these 10 days. Perhaps we're halfway to the beginning of the end of rural poverty. Perhaps we're witnesses to the birth of a global phenomenon. We've heard the people say we are ready. Ready to share in a constructive global partnership with renewed commitment and the courage to care.